Good morning, everybody. I am Mark Zussman, uh, the editor of Willamette Week. Uh, it's morning in Portland, but it's afternoon in Nigeria, where we're delighted to have as our guest, uh, uh, Undabusi. Uh, wonderful to have you here, really appreciate it. You are the country director for Mercy Corps, which is a Portland-based uh, NGO that does work with developing countries all over the world. You've been the director uh, only for a few months. Um, you've been involved in politics and government in Nigeria before that. But can you tell us what the what is Mercy Corps' presence in Nigeria? How big of an operation? Uh, okay. Uh, well, first of all, Mark, I want to thank you uh, for this this opportunity. Um, just to say a bit about uh, Mercy Corps, uh, we have been working in Nigeria since 2012. Uh, at present, we're operating in 13 states in the country uh, with a focus mainly in the northeast part of the country uh, in, in terms of our ongoing humanitarian crisis there. We're also operating in the middle belt of the country, of the country uh, focusing on the, uh, where you have a lot of ethnic uh, clashes. Uh, in terms of our focus, we're focused on conflict resolution, uh, peace building, and of course, economic empowerment for the youth. Uh, I don't know if you're aware, but Nigeria has a population of about 200 million people, and 60% of this population is under the age of 25. So uh, this is a segment uh, that Mercy Corps is uh, really focusing on. Nigeria is the most populous country in Africa, 200 million people. It's you know, more than half the population size of the United States. Um, yeah. While Mercy Corps isn't directly uh, involved in fighting COVID, um, you are witnessing on the ground a lot of what's happening. Uh, before we called yeah. this morning, I, I checked the uh, World Health Organization uh, statistics. And for yeah. uh, Nigeria, again, a, a country with uh, about 60% of the population of the United States. Um, as of today, Nigeria has had 533 deaths compared to 100,000 in the United States, uh, more yes. than 100,000 in the United States. So what what's going on there? Why are the numbers looking so good? Is it is it just a question of uh, time, or is it the fact that Nigeria, which has actually had good experience fighting Ebola and AIDS, is actually better equipped than the United States? Yeah, Mark, that's a that's a very uh, good question that you've raised. Uh, again, just to just to backtrack a bit uh, in terms of uh, the numbers, you know, as of June 23rd, uh, which was yesterday, uh, we had a total number of confirmed cases uh, at about approximately uh, 21,000. Uh, and those who have been discharged, uh, I think there are about 7,000 that have been discharged. And as you mentioned, uh, we have had about 500 people that have died. Um, now, the in terms of the numbers, as you've mentioned, yes, uh, it sounds quite interesting. Uh, you know. Many experts uh, believe that the number is higher uh, in terms of the the cases, and uh, and this has been attributed to the limited um, uh, ability for testing. <clears throat> so this may uh, may answer your question uh, a bit. Uh, we have had a bit a bit of challenge in terms of testing, so some have 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 said the numbers are actually higher. Um, but I think um, you know of of an issue which is is a more concern is that we have a, a weak healthcare system uh, in Nigeria. And uh, of course, the, the, the quarantine facilities uh, are not able to accommodate all the active cases uh, in the states. Uh, we do have a presidential task force on uh, COVID-19, and they are review, reviewing many of the uh, guidelines, uh, because as you know, uh, there has been a restriction of movements uh, in the state. But, um, but yeah, I think beyond the, the health issue, which is uh, a major issue in Nigeria, there's the economic dimension. Uh, because you, know, you have 40% of the workforce in Nigeria, which is uh, largely informal. So people need to move around uh, for work. Uh, you, know, you, have, uh, you have the drivers, you have the fruit sellers. I mean, 
you, these are daily wage earners and their income has been uh, disrupted. And, and so I think that's a major issue that uh, we're not talking about as much. And, uh, in terms of food prices, for example, uh, before COVID, a, a bag of rice, a hundred pound bag of rice sold for the Naira equivalent of about $35. Uh, this same bag during the COVID uh, situation is now selling for $65. Linda BC, so what is like life like in the cities in Nigeria? Are people um, are, are people sheltering in place insofar as they can? Are people wearing masks in public? Are restaurants open? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you know, Mark, I would say that uh, Africans and, and Nigerians are, in particular, are very uh, resilient. And uh, like I mentioned to you, um, the the COVID nineteen situation has affected uh, livelihoods. Uh, of course, uh, the government has put in place measures and uh, communications to advise people to engage in uh, social distancing, wear your, your face mask, and engage in, in proper hand washing and, and, and rest. Uh, while this message has come out, uh, I think in terms of people's response, uh, I think there's also the, the element of... Uh, some say a distrust between uh, the governments and the people. And, uh, you know, Nigeria is a very decentralized country. So, uh, of course, in many states where uh, security has uh, become an issue, uh, food security, uh, there has been a disconnect. And so you see uh, some people uh, not listening to government and, uh, not paying attention to, to those guidelines. And of course, in some parts of the country uh, where we have humanitarian crisis, uh, where we have conflict, this has also brought in a, a criminal element uh, of people who have taken advantage of, of this situation. And as I said earlier, uh, beyond the uh, health issue, of course there's the economic issue, but we're also, seeing the quiet issue, which is no one's talking about, which is the increase in conflicts, uh, particularly in the, in the northeast parts of the country and in the middle belt. And uh, uh, you're seeing uh, conflicts, uh, and I gave an example about how uh, with Mercy Corps, we engage in mediation uh, efforts, bringing communities together. Uh, but when you have these restrictions, these communities are not able to come together to have dialogue. And uh, what that has done is to increase tensions and uh, it has, uh, there has been a spike uh, in violence uh, amongst communities. So that's actually something that uh, we're also looking at as, as Mercy Corps. And uh, of course, you know, looking at the pre-existing crisis uh, in Nigeria and in the Northeast uh, prior to COVID-19, uh, where you had about 1.8 million people who uh, who were uh, displaced, who have been displaced, uh, and you have about 7 million people whose basic needs are not met uh, in terms of food, in terms of water, and in terms of uh, basic health care. Uh, so while COVID-19 is an issue that we should be uh, concerned about and we should be worried about the numbers, uh, let's not ignore uh, the issue of people's basic livelihood. Let's not ignore the issue of uh, the, the, the killings or the, the conflicts in certain communities and parts of the country. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I think these things have to be looked at holistically beyond the numbers of COVID-19. Great point. 